So my name is Scott Church, and I am the product strategist for Pro Tools Software, but more importantly for this interview, I was the product manager for the new user interface of Pro Tools 8, the mini editor, the score editor, and track comping. So one of the reasons we did this collection of features is we went out and we talked to a lot of end users, and we really wanted to figure out how could people stay in Pro Tools through the entire process. We really have a wonderful editing, a mixing, a production system, but people were often using other applications to augment their music creation. And there really was this general interest of people wanting to just stay in one app and having that all live in one place. So with the new user interface, the whole idea was darken it up, make it a little bit easier on the eyes, and make it a little bit more customizable, make it work with, uh, say, with session templates or window configurations. So those people who want to use MIDI, it's all laid out. For those people who are doing posts and just want to work with audio, they can get rid of it. So we had some nice ease of use features. And then with MIDI Editor and Score Editor, I really wanted to make MIDI fast. And so one of the things you'll notice just besides the MIDI Editor itself is if you use that smart tool, it's so easy to edit your MIDI. You just double click to make a note, you double click to take off a note, um, you hold down the Apple key and you can actually trim the velocity. So all of the little things that kind of used to bother us with MIDI in terms of having to switch between notes view and velocity view, we can do all of that either in the MIDI editor or you can just do that right in notes view because one of the things we wanted to do was while some people really wanted that third window, there are a lot of people who really liked editing all in one window. And so the idea was have that flexibility to work in both places. And so wherever we added features in the MIDI editor, we did our best to put it also in the edit window. Now with the score editor, we went and took a lot of end user feedback and said, there's a lot of DAWs out there doing notation. What is it that's really important to you? And it's funny, the number one adjective we got back was intimidating. People didn't want it to be um, difficult to use. The needs were really simple. I write music, I can read music, I just want to edit and interact with Pro Tools in that way. So we took our, our basic tools, our pencil tool, our grabber tool, our selector tool, and we made it work in notation just like it would with MIDI or with audio. So for a Pro Tools user, you know, when they say, how do I click notes into a staff? Well, you just take the pencil tool and you click it. And how do you move pitch? Well, you just use the grabber tool and you can move it up and down and right and left. So it should be really familiar. In fact, we, we pulled the whole thing off with only two dialogues, which is pretty amazing if you've seen some of the other um, notation features in DAW editors. So it's all real time. We were able to leverage Sibelius. And so for, I'd say that 80-20 rule, we really focused on what do most people want. And for that other 20 who really do want more, one of the amazing advantages DigiDesign has is that, of course, we own Sibelius. So what we did is we made it so now when you do a send a Sibelius command, we don't just write a MIDI file, we actually write a .sib file. So exactly that transcription you see in our notation editor, that's actually what gets sent to Sibelius. And then you can go ahead and add your symbols and all your text and make it really nice for printing. But for most of us, like the guys like me that just basically want to print quick lead sheets and just be able to edit it, the notation in Pro Tools really, for me, really nails it. In terms of track comping, that was a really tricky feature to, to do, actually. MIDI editor and scorter, it's kind of obvious what we would do. But in Pro Tools, there's so many ways to record. You can loop record, or if you're like me and kind of organized, you can use playlists and put every take on a playlist. And then there's other people who just put their cursor down on the track and just kind of over and over blow over all their old recordings and just kind of assemble a recording right there on that one playlist. And in other applications, you, you can't really do that with their comping feature. You actually have to work a particular way for it to show up correctly with comping, or you kind of have to go through this little song and dance where you take folders and stuff like that, and we just we didn't want to do that. So what we did is instead we made what's called a playlist view. And so you have your track, and you switch it into playlist, and it just shows you a lane for every single playlist, and you can highlight something with your selector tool, and you can just promote it up with a key command or a little button, and just push up the bits that you want. And the way those lanes get populated then is you can use our new match criteria. And so if you've done a loop recording, you can just say put every loop pass down there. And even if you haven't done a loop recording, you can just say, well, find everything that was recorded to this track and go ahead and put that on a lane for me and I'll comp up. So Pro Tools 8 really was a lot about listening to end users, getting a lot of the little things right, and making it so you could do that end-to-end -end music creation. And so the other part we just needed to take care of was, of course, instruments. And another advantage we have is, of course, we own Air. And Air made five instruments for Pro Tools. We have Boom, which is um, a really fun electronic drum kit. We have a DB33, and that's a, a, an amazing sounding organ, and it has a convolution Leslie. But what I like about it is we actually give you 11 free now, so you could take a guitar, 
put it into 11 free, and you can actually route that audio into that convolution Leslie on the organ, and then maybe match it up with like a spring reverb or um, a flanger, and it's an amazing sound. So even if you're not a keyboardist and don't appreciate the organ, then you can do that whole um, Leslie trick. Um, the other thing is we made Expand 2. We doubled the content. It's got 2,000 sounds now, and it's just a, an easier interface. It used to have this kind of four-tap view thing, and we just kind of got rid of that and figured out how to you know, have less knobs, have less faders, and just make it work all in one view. So we got that down. We also have an acoustic piano, and then um, the favorite one of the air team is we have this one called Vacuum. And it's just kind of a mm, not-so-polite synth. It's got basically tube distortion at every stage, and just kind of a wacky, unexpected thing. And so what I would say about the instruments is we really focused on personality. So now you've got these kind of high-quality instruments. You've got an efficient DAW to work within for all your MIDI, and then, of course, all the fabulous mixing and Pro Tools. So, I hope we delivered a lot of what people were asking for. All right, so in terms of more information, I started the www.protoolsblog.com, and this really isn't so much a digi thing, it's something that I do in my own time. And the reason I did it was, when I joined DigiDesign two years ago, I was an end user too, and I was so excited. I came in and I had all these great ideas, and Pro Tools 8 was in fact my first project. And what I wanted to do was share with people what it's like to actually develop these features, who we talk to, why we make some of the decisions we do, um, and just kind of share the experience of being a Pro Tools product manager. Um, one of the kind of hidden surprises is I've gotten to meet a ton of great people from the blog. In fact, even here at AES, uh, normally I just meet the same people and talk to the same friends that I've known over the years. And this time I just went up on the duck, I put on my blog and just said, hey, any end user who reads this, just go ahead, email me and let's meet up at AES. And so it's just been a fantastic way to just kind of expand my circle of end users that I get to meet. And, uh, Honestly, I just do it because it's fun and I like talking about Pro Tools and it's fun to meet all of you because a lot of you guys have a lot of great ideas and um, that's why I do the Pro Tools blog.